My name is Richard Lewis Ackerman. I was born in 1921 in Union City, Indiana. I was born and raised on a farm. I learned to drive in a horse and buggy back in those days. And then the war came along. I enlisted in the Navy. Before I went in the Navy, I was reading the same grade books in the seventh grade of school. And my dad came along and took my same grade book away from me and gave me an article in a magazine about the Matanuska Valley because they was going to give the farmers 160 acres in the Matanuska Valley back then. And he was thinking about going and taking the whole family. Three girls and three boys, and my mom and grandma. <laughs> and the bus driver came to pick us up and he told my mom that there was a moose across the bay, across Mud Bay. And um, so she put on her co winter coat and over her, I think she was wearing like, insulated underwear or something <laughs> and and she just threw on her coat and drove down there and she shot this moose across the bay and my dad was out fishing and she didn't know what was she going to do now she had a moose down across the bay so she went over to the cannery and they brought over a loader and went across the flats and picked up her moose and brought it back and dumped it in our yard and every one of them was like Jean, you should have known you couldn't shoot a moose that far away. And she said, well, I didn't know I couldn't do it, so I did it. I grew up, I uh, had hunting and fishing in my blood right off the start. Uh, the power of the blood is, uh, is way beyond my imagination. The uh, uh, picture of my dad there, I am what I am because of him. He didn't have to teach me anything, he didn't have to say nothing. I have his blood and I, all my success is just the power of the blood. It's just the way it is. When I first moved to Juneau, eight years old, straight out of the village, this is my first real exposure to white people. And baseball was a good example of what I had to deal with. Eskimos don't raise their voices at each other. If an Eskimo raises their voice at you, it means they're either drunk or crazy. And uh, they had this game of baseball where people are always yelling at each other. It looked to me like they were nuts. And the first thing I learned about baseball is never get close to the ball because the closer you get to the ball, the louder they yell and the more they're yelling at you. And if you can stay away from the ball, they leave you alone. And so I had a very short career in Little League. We left Seward for military reasons. They had broken the code and it referred to the Japanese attacking the islands of the North Pacific. And of course they, meant, they thought that meant the Aleutians. And so we were given 24 hours notice and this was a month before Pearl Harbor. And all the people from the interior, all the military families, came down on the train and we were evacuated on this on the SS St. Mihiel. It was a big troop transport. The wolf wandered into the yard at the homestead uh, with his nose all full of porcupine quills. Uh, I figured out a way to trap him. He was pretty weak, hadn't eaten in a long time. Tied him up and brought him up to where we had a storm fence and I held him between two pieces of storm fence and then took a pair of pliers. So I pulled the, all the porcupine quills out and uh, tied him up and we fed him and then put another piece of storm fence over him, untied him, and let him loose. And he stayed around the house for the next year. He was kind of our pet. One day a bear chased Mom and I up on the roof and we spent the whole day there. We were out picking berries and there wasn't enough time to make it to the door. Uh, we went up the ladder onto the roof and pulled the ladder up and, and uh, the bear stayed right around the base of the house there all day until Dad got home from work and he finally ran the bear off. It was quite an exciting uh, uh, first year in Alaska for an 11-year-old like me.